May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. You may have heard it said that do not be afraid is one of the most repeated phrases in the Bible. That in fact, some version version of it has been said about 365 times to remind us each and every day not to be afraid. But I say to you, this is an internet fiction and it just goes to show you shouldn't believe everything you read on the internet. Do not be afraid or other versions thereof is said 139 times in the Bible. And while that doesn't count as exactly once a day, it's still quite a few times that it's said in the Bible. So maybe it's okay if we're sometimes afraid. After all, there are completely appropriate times to be afraid in our lives. After all, well, I won't enumerate them here, but there are also many times not to be afraid. So we have being afraid, not being afraid. Here is a non-exhaustive list of times to not be afraid, and maybe some of them will resonate with you. Don't be afraid to try. Don't be afraid of being a beginner. Don't be afraid of failure. Don't be afraid to start over. Don't be afraid to choose a different path. Don't be afraid of change. Don't be afraid of the dark. Don't be afraid of losing people. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid of what people might say. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to say you were wrong. Don't be afraid of being sad. Don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. Don't be afraid to be alone. Now, I suspect we are all occasionally plagued by anxious thoughts and fear many times in our lives. We want God to make us whole. We want God to take away these anxious, fearful, dark thoughts. And you know, it's funny. God never does that. Not once. God continues to show us the shadow side of our soul, and God continues to show us the wonder that is a part of each of us, and God blesses them both. We know that everything is from God, and God will transform us and make us whole. But maybe sometimes we fear that our soul, with its hunger for truth and justice and love and forgiveness, has lost its power to guide our lives. And we become lost in a a fog of indecision and regret and distrust. And we feel like life is too big to handle sometimes, and that makes us fearful. It's as if the good things in our life are called into question sometimes. So we desperately push our fears down into our inner darkness where no one can see them, which only makes it a secret thing, a hidden thing, a powerful thing. We begin to secretly fear that wholeness can only be found in perfection. Now, I'm here to tell you, that is absolutely not true. It is absolutely not true. Get it out of your mind. Perfection is a notion developed and proclaimed by the Greek philosophers, okay? Now, their contribution to the world, such as the ideas about reason and inquiry, were inspired. However, their notion of perfection needs to be thrown into the nearest trash receptacle. It's where it belongs. People were not created to be perfect. Perfection is not a Jewish notion at all. Jews believe in ultimate good, not ultimate perfection. And so did Jesus. Jesus was not a perfectionist. 
So put that away forever, please. So how do we start living a life that is predicated less on what we fear and more on what we dare? As the three disciples cowered in fear during and after this vision of transfiguration, Jesus gave them the answer. What was it? Anybody hear it? <laughs> Get up, he said. That's right. The first step towards not fearing ourselves or the world and embracing a life of love is to stop sitting and thinking about it, stop obsessing about building cages for what we know, obsessing about what if scenarios and get up, stand up. It's hard to keep immobile when you're standing. When you get up, you're going somewhere. When you stand up, you're ready. Ready for what? To move forward into our fears, not away from them, to go through them. <coughs> get up, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to be great. Do not be afraid to challenge yourself. Do not be afraid to try something new. Do not be afraid to dream big. Do not be afraid of being happy. Do not be afraid to be different. Do not be afraid to speak up. Do not be afraid to speak out. Do not be afraid to take a chance. Do not be afraid of the unknown. Do not be afraid to love. Why should you not be afraid? Because you are beloved of God. Amen. Let us now stand and affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed found on page